let's return back to the question of how many alien civilizations are out there and uh, talk about the Drake equation. Yeah. Can you uh, explain the Drake equation? You know, people have various uh, feelings about the Drake equation. Uh, it, you know, it can be abused, but basically it was the, the story actually is really interesting. So Frank Drake mm -hmm. in uh, 1960 does the first ever astrobiological experiment. He gets a radio telescope, points it at a couple of stars and listens for signals. That was the first time anybody done any experiment about any kind of life in the history of humanity. Um, and he does it and he's kind of waiting for everybody to make fun of him. Instead, he gets a phone call from the government says, hey, we want you to do a um, – a meeting on interstellar communications, right? So he's like, okay. So they organize a meeting with like just eight people. A young Carl Sagan is going to be there as well. Uh, and like the night before, Drake has to come up with a uh, uh, an agenda. How do you come up for an with a, an agenda for a meeting on a topic that no one's ever talked about before, yeah. right? And so he actually, right, he breaks what he does. What's so brilliant about the Drake equation is he breaks the problem of how many civilizations are there out there into a bunch of sub-problems, right? And he breaks it into seven sub-problems. Each one of them is a factor in an equation that when you multiply them all together, you get the number of civilizations out there that we could communicate with. So the first term is the rate at which stars form. The second term is the fraction of those stars that have planets, F sub P. The next term is the number of planets in the habitable zone, the place where we think life could form. Uh, the next term after that is the fraction of those planets where actually an abiogenesis event, life forms, occurs. The next one is the fraction of planets on which you start to get intelligence. After that, it's the fraction of planets where that intelligence goes on to create a civilization. And then finally, the last term, which is the one that we really care about, is the lifetime. How long you have a civilization, now how long does it last? Well, you say we we humans. We humans, right? Because we're standing, we're staring at the, you know, multiple guns pointing at yeah. us. You know, nuclear war, climate change, AI. Um, so, you know, how long on, in general does civilizations last? Now, each one of these terms, what was brilliant about what he did was, what he was doing was he was quantifying our ignorance, right? By breaking the problem up into these seven sub-problems, he gave astronomers something to do. Right. And so, you know, this is always with a new research field. You need a research program or else you just have a bunch of vague questions. You don't even know really what you're trying to do. Um, so, you know, the star people could figure out how many stars were forming per year. The, the people who were interested in planets could go out and find techniques to discover planets, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, these are their own fields. Essentially, by creating this equation, he's launching new fields. Yeah, that's exactly. He gave astrobiology, which wasn't even a term then. A roadmap, mm -hmm. like, okay, you guys go do this, you go do that, you go do that. And it had such far-reaching effect on astrobiology because it did break the problem up in a way that gave useful, uh, uh, you know, sort of marching orders mm -hmm. for all these different groups. Like, for example, it's because of the Drake equation in some sense that um, people who were involved in SETI pushed NASA to develop the technologies for planet hunting. There was this amazing meeting in 1978, 19, two meetings, 1978 and 1979, that were driven in some part by the people who were involved in SETI getting NASA together to say, look, okay, look, how, you know, what's, what's the roadmap for us to develop technologies to find, find planets? So, um, yeah, so, you know, the Drake equation is absolutely uh, 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 foundational for astrobiology, but we should remember that it's not a law of nature right? It's not something that's, it's not E equals MC squared. And so you can see it being abused in some sense. People, you know, it's generated a trillion papers. Some of those papers are good. I've written some of those and some of those papers are bad. Um, you know, I'm not sure where my paper fits in on those. But I'm saying, you know, one should be careful about what you're using it for. But in terms of understanding the problem that, uh, that astrobiology faces, this really broke it up in a useful way.